The treatments we've discussed in our previous section have an established track record of success in helping a person induce or maintain remission of Crohn's disease, but they have varying degrees of success for each individual. Often a combination of one or more of the drugs may be utilized to produce the best results. For those patients whose condition is still unmanageable or needs improvement, there is another alternative to consider, biologic response modifiers. When a person suffers from Crohn's disease, their immune system produces too much of a protein called tumor necrosis factor, or TNF. This excess TNF puts out a signal to the body to produce substances that attack healthy body tissue and cause excessive inflammation. Biologic therapies as a class have been specifically designed to bind or block proteins in the body. One specific type of biologic actually targets and binds to TNF so that it cannot be recognized. If the cells do not recognize TNF, they also do not receive the signal to release the substances that cause damage, thereby slowing progression of the disease. At the present time, the only biologic agent that's been approved by the FDA for the treatment of Crohn's disease is infliximab. However, there are several other anti-TNF biologic agents that are undergoing review by the FDA that are likely to be approved within the next year. It's important for patients to have several options regarding the biologic anti-TNF agents. The first reason is that although most patients respond to infliximab, they can lose their response because of the development of antibodies. And if they do that, they will respond to other anti-TNF agents that don't have the same chemical structure. The other is that infliximab requires an infusion therapy initially, then following in two weeks, then a month later and every eight weeks. The subsequent anti-TNF biologics that are about to be approved will be self-administered and not require a visit to the doctor's office or infusion center. It's important for patients to understand that a combination of therapies will be used in many of them and they should be asking questions about what each drug is supposed to be doing so they best know what they're being exposed to. Biologic therapies have shown promise in both male and female patients of various ages. However, as with any illness, early diagnosis and treatment is very important to minimize damage. There are two reasons why it's important to diagnose and treat Crohn's disease as early as possible. The first is obvious. Patients are suffering with abdominal pain, diarrhea, bleeding, nausea or vomiting, and they need to get rid of these symptoms as quickly as possible so they can return to work or school. The second is more difficult. Crohn's disease is a chronic progressive disease. By that we mean that over time, the inflammation leads to scarring that can cause blockages and other complications. And if we can intervene with treatment earlier, we can prevent these complications. In the past, people have had to have surgery to remove segments of their small intestine that have been so diseased that it's no longer working. And now we believe that with biologic therapy, we can try to prevent those patients requiring surgery. When a person is able to start treatment before Crohn's disease has progressed too far, it can have a positive effect on their long-term prognosis and their quality of life. The goal of therapy for Crohn's disease, whether you've just been diagnosed last week or whether you've actually had this disease for 10 or 15 years is the same. It's to control the inflammation so the patient feels well, and once that's achieved, to keep that under control as long as possible and as safely as possible. So when somebody who's diagnosed with Crohn's recently or who's been suffering from the disease for a long time needs to receive a biologic therapy, they should anticipate that if they respond to that therapy, they're going to feel well and feel well pretty rapidly We've seen with biologic therapies that the patients respond within one or two weeks, and it's very dramatic. If a patient doesn't respond or their symptoms continue despite the therapy, they really should be talking to their doctor about alternative options, and sometimes a surgery may be necessary. One of the most frequent questions patients may ask is, can my condition have progressed too far already? Is a biologic still an option for me? In general, we believe that Crohn's disease is relatively constant in its behavior 
and its location and how it affects individual patients. So some people feel that their disease has progressed too far to respond to some of our therapies. That's not necessarily true. If you've had disease for a long time, you may respond just as well to a biologic therapy, for instance, as somebody who's just been diagnosed. But it's important to recognize when the disease and the symptoms you're having is due to scar tissue and would better respond to surgery or something else. So we need to distinguish that with your doctor and then you should be able to try therapies and see how they respond. While biologics have a proven track record of being able to induce or maintain a state of remission in some patients, there are certain precautions that a person must be made aware of. Like most prescription drugs, there are risks associated with short and long-term use. In general, for the most patients, the biologic anti-TNF therapies have been very safe. However, we need to be aware of several precautions. First and foremost is infections. These medicines do lower our immunity, and in particular to infections such as tuberculosis. So these should not be administered to patients who have active infections. In addition, occasionally patients develop allergies to these biologic agents, and they should not be given to patients who have severe heart failure, severe liver disease, or patients who have had multiple sclerosis or other neurologic conditions. If a patient starts to experience any of the following signs or symptoms of infection, they should contact their physician immediately. A cough that doesn't go away, fever, chills, weight loss, congestion, flu-like symptoms. In addition, you should tell your doctor if you see any signs of infection anywhere on your body. You have or suspect that you may have hepatitis B virus. You feel numbness or tingling, or if you have ever had a disease that affects your nervous system. You have ever been treated for heart failure. You are scheduled for any vaccines or before you have major surgery. If you are pregnant, become pregnant, or plan to become pregnant. And as always, be sure to provide your physician with a thorough medical history. Make him aware of any changes. Very, very Even if you I feel they might not be relevant, let the doctor make that decision. I rely on my patients to maintain a thorough record of how they're doing when they're on biologic therapy for a number of reasons. One is that these are therapies that aren't without risk. So I want to make sure if they're on biologic therapy and they're going to be on it for a long time, I want to make sure they're doing well on it. Not that just that they're taking it because there was nothing left for them to take. I want to make sure that they're having good efficacy, that the, that the effect hasn't worn off, that they're still in remission, and by remission I mean that they're, they're doing well, they're getting to work, they have good control over their, over their bowel movements, they have enough energy after work that they can go work out or chase after their children or whatever normal is for them. And I can only rely on them because I'm not going to be at home with them every day to see how they're doing. In addition to the risks associated with long-term use, it is important to be aware of the contraindications related to biologics. When a patient is starting on a biologic therapy for their Crohn's disease, it's very important that their doctor know all their other medications and discuss them carefully, not only to make sure there's not going to be a drug interaction, but also because certain medications may have better absorption after the bowel heals and when the biologic therapy works effectively in Crohn's disease, the drugs that they're taking for other diseases may be absorbed into the bloodstream and it may actually change the way they respond to those therapies. So it's common not only to see changes in the way they respond to some other therapies, but also for patients who respond to biologic therapies to gain weight. And they often are upset by their weight gain, but it's a combination of the bowel healing, the patient feeling well enough to start eating more, and the metabolism of the patient with active Crohn's disease goes down when the disease goes into remission. So the weight gain we see is usually a good sign after a response to a biologic therapy. If the medicine a patient is taking does induce or maintain remission, it is important to continue with the prescribed therapy. Deviation from your doctor's orders can have negative results. People, once they're feeling better, have a tendency to stop their medication. And that's particularly true when we're talking about pills. People don't like to take pills. Once they're feeling better, they can, they can stop taking their pills. And in fact, we know that when they do, they flare up their disease. And one of the risks they can run is not only do they flare, but in fact, sometimes it's actually harder to get them better once they go back on their medication. 
In the example of biologic therapy, if people start missing their doses of biologic agents, their disease can progress, and every time that, that Crohn's flares up, you lose a little bit more of small intestine. By that I mean it tends to get narrower and narrower and, and narrower. And we know that the best thing is to try to keep people in remission just constantly, not have a roller coaster effect where they're better, then they're worse, then they're better, then they're worse. So it's better to stay even keel. And it really has to be that the person uh, recognizes that and, and is responsible for taking their medications as they should. For those whose condition has progressed to the point where medication is not sufficient, surgery is the only available option. Unfortunately, two-thirds to three-quarters of all persons suffering from Crohn's disease will require surgery at some point in their lives. The majority of patients with Crohn's disease continue with medical treatment, but because Crohn's disease can lead to scarring of the intestine, that scarring leads to blockages that require a removal of the section of intestine that is so narrowed. In addition, the nature of Crohn's disease is that it is deep into the wall of the intestine and can actually communicate with another loop of intestine or another structure. We call that a fistula. The fistula, if it gets infected, is called an abscess. So sometimes these abscesses need to be drained or the fistula is opened up or removed. Most patients with Crohn's disease will need at least one surgery and it shouldn't be viewed as a failure of all of our therapies. We should recognize that surgery when needed will make a patient feel well. The fascinating feature about Crohn's disease is that when the bowel loops are sewn back together, the disease does recur. And at the end of a year, if you looked with a scope at people who've had surgery for their Crohn's disease, most of them will have small ulcers at the site of the uh, surgery. The determinants of how rapidly the disease recurs are based on the disease itself in that individual patient and how aggressive it's been leading up to the surgery, and also smoking. People who smoke cigarettes or other tobacco are likely to have more rapid recurrence than those who are non-smokers. So very importantly, after surgery, we tell people that unfortunately disease is likely to recur, but you can slow that down or minimize it if you're able to quit smoking. And finally, in people who need ileostomies, which is when a loop of bowel is brought to the skin, that is a disease state in which Crohn's is unlikely to recur at all. So something about diverting the bowel stream into a pouch on the outside of the body prevents the disease from coming back. So that's a rare type of surgery we do for Crohn's these days, but when people need it, they should know that they're not gonna need therapy in most cases after that. By now, you should have a good understanding of the various treatment options, both medicinal and surgical, for Crohn's disease. In our next segment, we will look at some additional resources that are designed to help you cope with this difficult condition.